Mike, as you saw him just now, I'm joined by Mike Tildesley, the Associate Professor in Infection Disease Modelling at the University of Warwick. Uh, Professor, great to, I don't know if you were able to, uh, to watch Boris Johnson's speech. He talked about that R rate, about keeping it under one. From a scientific point of view, was that what you wanted to hear? Well, I mean, that's certainly really crucial. I mean, we have pretty good evidence that, um, as was as was the Prime Minister said in his speech, that the reproduction number is currently below one. There is still quite a lot of uncertainty, actually, how far below one it is. Um, our predictions would say it's anything from about a half up to about 0.9. Um, and But actually, the exact value is really crucial when it comes to lifting re, uh, lifting lockdown measures because if it turns out that our reproduction number is relatively close to one then we may see that we might see a resurgence as we start to relax if the r number is actually somewhat lower than that it gives us a little bit more flexibility in terms of relaxation so i think you know it's it was a very important message and i think the key message going forward as well is that as we start to relax social dis uh, as we start to relax lockdown it must be done with social distancing and with necessary precautions in place, because what we really want to avoid is driving the reproduction number back up and this, as has already been talked about, potential second peak occurring. Uh, our entire life as a country now seems to be based on that R rate. How accurate is the estimation of that rate that we need in order to make these huge decisions? Well, of course, I mean, there is, there is uncertainty around our estimation of the reproduction rate. I mean, you have to remember that um, we, we don't have information on every single infected individual in the population because what we do have information on is those that we go out and we do manage to test. Um, as we increase testing, we get much more of an understanding of um, how many people may be infected. Uh, of course, as we get more data, as the epi epidemic progresses, our certainty around those values increases. Um, and as I said, it is really important that we continue to try to improve that certainty, particularly with relaxation, because um, as we start to lift these measures, what we're really interested in is trying to see how close to one we are currently and how, how that might change as we start to relax, because of course, as I said before, if we drift above one, we'll start to see cases climbing again. Um, and some of these measures that may have been relaxed may then need to be in reintroduced. Uh I spoke to uh, someone in France just now. I was struck by the fact that in France there are red zones and green zones. Red zones, cities, they're crowded. Green zones, where more can happen uh, because they're less crowded. We don't seem to be adopting that in the UK. Uh, we we currently aren't, and I mean I think this is probably more of a uh, more of a political rather than an epidemiological issue in terms of how we would manage this. I mean we do know that generally we get larger infections where population density is higher um, and places that are more connected. So very early on in the outbreak, of course, the majority of the cases were in London um, before we saw spread throughout the United Kingdom. It may be as we go down the line that it, we may need to start to consider some kind of regional interventions, particularly if we get in a stage where we start to see new clusters emerging in particular regions. We start to see cases being driven up there and local health services being overwhelmed. I mean, I think the very clear message from the start was the sort of we are all in this together message, which is why any kind of measure was put in at a national scale. But as we start to lift measures and maybe think about reintroducing them, some kind of bespoke local policies may need to be considered so that we can try to control these local clusters as they may emerge. Dr. Mike Tildesley, thank you so much.